Hey guys, continuing on what we were talking about during class last night, uh, here's a couple of tips on how to speed up your workflow in order to improve your box modeling speed. So uh, we were talking about marking menus and how they are context specific. So meaning if I have nothing selected on the on my scene and I were to right click, I have one kind of flyout menu. If I press the shift key and I keep it pressed and then I right click, I have a different kind of menu available to me. And this is the, the, the actual poly modeling menu right now. So if I were to go into sphere, options, then the sphere options would open up, the window would open up. But if I don't, if I simply just click sphere, I would get a sphere in the center of my scene. And along with any of, remember anything else that you have. So if you just right, uh, press shift and click with nothing selected on the scene, so make sure that nothing is selected, then you have the ability to build something, one of the primitives. Now, let's assume that you have something selected. Like in this case, I had the sphere selected. If I press the shift key and I right click, I get all of the modeling tools that are available for that particular shape for this polygon. So we have all the things that we've talked, we've been talking about, like combining and all that stuff. You can also extrude, multi-cut, and all the uh, modeling tools that we see on the modeling tool uh, toolkit. They're all available in here as well. So that's yet another way of accessing this. Uh, now let's go ahead and press the Control modifier key along with the shift key. So if I press control shift and then I right click, I get yet another menu. This flyout menu has to do with selection. This is what we call the selection flyout menu or the selection hotbox. And this allows me to select how to um, control the actual um, selection of the object based on what, whether I'm working on components on objects, world and whatever, wherever I want to align that uh, my gizmo. So for example, let me select this object and as you can see that object's been rotated, yet my gizmo by default is looking at the world. So yesterday I told you to change the rotation of that gizmo. You can actually affect the pivot point, but what I told you to do yesterday was double click the tool and change the axis orientation. So you would choose from here to say world, or you would choose uh, component or you would choose object, you know, depending on what you're working with. So at this time, the default is world. But if I want to have access without having to double click on that, I can always press control and shift, right click, and I can say, okay, instead of choosing world, let me choose object. And you'll notice that my gizmo now has rotated to match the position of the object. You want to do this, especially when you're animating something, because it lets you uh, basically determine how you want to rotate or move the objects based on whether you are looking at the uh, world position of the object position, uh, you know, with respect to the entire scene or with respect to itself. Remember, we talked about that there's two um, ways of looking at the 3D world. One is by the world itself, by the scene, and the other one is by the center of gravity of the object. So based on the volume of the object, where does my pivot point where would my pivot point go? Where would my anchor, center anchor point for of gravity for this object would go and in which direction? And so that's how you change this. Now, what this gives you is the ability to move based on the position of the object. Right now, we are on object orientation. But if I go ahead and press Control, Shift, and right click, I can switch that to world. And now I am moving my object based on the orientation of the world. So that is a fast way, instead of having to double click, that's a fast way of accessing that change. Another thing we didn't talk about during class yesterday was the, uh, the circularize tool. And so that's one of the new tools that you find under um, edit mesh, circularize. It's one of the tools that we have available as a uh, modeling uh, tool. And the way this tool works is the following way. Let me go ahead and go into component mode and I'm gonna choose face. And then I'm going to paint selection, select this area here. Now, remember to paint select, you need to press the tab key on the keyboard and keep it pressed. So if I'm pressing the tab key and I'm keeping it pressed, and then I click and drag across the geometry that I want to select. I am painting a selection. That is the tab key, T-A-B key. And so with that, with those faces selected, what I want to do now is I can either shift right click to find circularize from here from the flyout menu if I can find it and here it is or I can go to the edit mesh circularize option so either one of the two uh, ways of getting here is going to get you to the exact same point so let's go ahead and use the flyout menu 
and choose circularize and just simply use the default values. Now, as you can see, this creates a circular distribution of all the edges that you have selected, the, all the edges that are surrounding the faces that you had selected. And it allows you to do any number of things based on what numbers or values you enter onto the floating uh, window. So you can go ahead and offset the normals if you want to. You can go ahead and radial offset, meaning you can increase or decrease the, the value of the circle that is the resulting uh, circle from that, from that uh, operation. You can twist this. So if, you're, if your uh, edges do not, for some reason, when you're circularized, they do not match, you can actually, with this, uh, the files, with the object still selected the way it is, so basically I'm still inside the tool, I can go ahead and organize this until I get it to be what I'm looking to create. If I'm trying to match something else, maybe I'm trying to match another geometry that is different than what I have here, what this gave me, then I can go ahead and twist that. So you have options here that you can change in order to uh, create fairly circular, um, fairly circular geometry simply based on selecting a, a, a few faces and telling it to circularize it for you. So an example of how to use something like this, we could be, we could perhaps try to extrude. So let's go ahead and extrude and move this slightly in a little bit. Actually, before I move it in, let me undo that and let me offset this inward slightly. I'm going to make only one subdivision. And I am going to do this just 0, 5. Let's see if that's enough. Just a tad. I just want to create a little lip around my geometry here. So let's see if that works. And that's enough for that. So what I'm trying to do is reinforce that edge. And then I'm going to create yet another extrusion. And this one I'm going to push in slightly to create the other uh, edge loop inside. I want to make sure that I only have one. By default, this gave me eight. So that one is more than enough. Then I'm going to press Control E once again to extrude once more. So let's go ahead and press Control E. And there's my extrusion. I only need one for that as well. And let's go ahead and extrude yet again. Control E, just a little bit, and change that value to one. And that's just another reinforcement down at the bottom. And perhaps I can extrude yet once again, make that one. and. Again, offset ever so slightly to bring it in. Probably less than that, 0 0.5. Probably less, 0 0.03. And that's enough. So with that done, let's go ahead and take a look at the end result of this when I smooth it. So I have a perfectly good circle indentation in that cube. So I just press 3 to smooth that out, and you'll see the end result gives me a perfect, uh, a fairly good circle. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's really good for the amount of geometry that I have on the object. So let's go ahead and get out of smooth mode, go back to polygon, and you see that I have very few polygons in order to create such a smooth surface. So that is the advantage of working with something like Circularize. It, it avoids you having to do uh, a lot of moving of edges as you as we would do or uh, vertices in order to create a shape like this. So that is a huge time saver. Another tool that I forgot to mention yesterday is a tool that allows you to start modify, bringing back um, a topology that you might have uh, uh, you know, damaged or that you might have changed without noticing. So for example, I have this indentation on this cylinder. And so with that, what I want to do is I want to bring back that center um, edge loop right here. I want to bring it back to the size of everything else around it. Now, your first inclination would be to select that edge loop and then go to the scale tool and then try to scale it. Now, let's switch this because it's, the mode is looking at object. I want to make sure that it looks at world. And if I were to scale that, that's okay. It, it will start giving me the result that I want. But there's a tool that allows you to do this a little bit faster by averaging the position of the edges all around the edge loop that you have selected. And you find that by pressing the shift key, right clicking, and it's called edit edge flow. So with the default value that it has, which I believe is one, 
simply click on that and you'll notice that your shape goes back to the average of whatever happens to be around it, giving you a fairly continuous, smooth surface around the object that you had changed before that you had deformed. So that tool is also very handy in order to start bringing back, retopologizing your objects so that they actually flow smoother, so you end up with smoother surfaces. So the takeaway from this video is that the marking menus, those flyout menus, give us access to a lot of tools. They basically, to all the tools basically, that we will need for box modeling. So get used to shift, right clicking or right clicking if you're accessing something that is specific to this menu. Same option, if I shift, right click, I get a different flyout menu. If I press control shift and right click, I get the, uh, the menu that is for selection. So if you have uh, those keys handy, if you have the, uh, uh, an ability to actually keep those hand, that, that left hand on your keyboard and start moving around with the shortcuts, your workflows will be a lot faster.